everyone, my name is Kimberly and I am assisting Sam with this class. Um, so today in this video we're going to recap Unit 2 and talk about some of the key ideas that came up in the discussion uh, boards and in the readings about formative and summative assessments. And then we'll preview some of the assignments and some of the things that y'all will be doing in Unit 3. When we're thinking about the difference between formative and summative assessments, um, the big difference is not in the assessment itself, but in how you are using the information from the assessment. Um, so as a reminder, Black and William defined formative assessment is when evidence is actually used to adapt the teaching to meet the student's needs. So if you have an assessment, whether that's a quiz or a test or an exit ticket, um, whatever it might be, that is just an assessment. Um, and then if you choose to take the information um, about students learning from the assessment and use it to adapt your teaching, um, then it has been a formative assessment. Whereas if you choose to assign it a grade and then move on, um, then it can be considered an assumptive assessment. Both of the articles that we read in this unit talked about the benefits of using formative assessment practices in the classroom in terms of student achievement, um, especially for students who are sh maybe struggling in mathematics. To summarize the two articles, I'd like us to revisit the conclusion of the five strategies paper, um, which said that the available research evidence suggests that considerable, considerable enhancements in student achievement are possible when teachers use assessment minute by minute and day by day to adjust their instruction to meet their students' learning needs. However, it is also clear that making such changes is much more than just adding a few routines to one's normal practice. It involves a change of focus from what the teacher is putting into the process and to what the learner is getting out of it. And the radical nature of the change means that the support of colleagues is essential. I would also add uh, to this quote just the idea that um, in implementing formative assessment strategies in this minute by minute, day by day sort of way takes practice and it's not something that you can just automatically begin to do. Um, so if you are relatively new to formative assessments, I encourage you to pick one or two strategies or ideas that have come out um, in either the discussion board prompts or um, the readings and just start there and then to slowly build in more formative assessment practices as you go on. So let's turn our focus to some of the key ideas that came out from the discussion board prompts. So one of the goals that we had for this unit for y'all was to reflect on your own formative assessment practices, as well as share ideas with each other about the ways that you use formative assessment in your classroom. And there were a lot of great ideas that came out. Um, so I encourage you to write them down so that you have them somewhere that you can look at later on. Some of the examples of formative assessment practices that y'all included um, were things such as Plickers or Google Forms as a way of using technology to do formative assessment, or other practices such as uh, FIS25 or just using questions in the classroom. Um, our assignment for this unit was to do the My Favorite No, um, which I hope that y'all enjoyed and got a lot out of. Um, and that also is an example of a formative assessment practice. One key takeaway from these strategies is that formative assessments do not necessarily have to be long or time consuming, either in preparing them or enacting them in the classroom in order to help you understand student thinking better and help students reflect on their own understanding. One of the common challenges that y'all brought up in the discussion board was this idea of time, both the time that it takes to do a formative assessment in the classroom and the time it takes to respond to the information that you collect. Julie Hubbard, for example, mentioned in the discussion board that she sometimes found that she had collected so much evidence of student learning that it was almost too much to organize or deal with, which then made the information she collected useless because she wasn't able to make effective changes to inst her instruction in a timely manner. This brings us to the second key idea, which is that you should always have a purpose for the giving a formative assessment and a plan for how you're going to use the information that you receive in future lessons. Uh, we certainly don't want to advocate collecting tons of data and then doing nothing with it because you just feel overwhelmed by the amount of information that you've collected. 
So as you are thinking about formative assessments in your classroom going forward, um, also make sure that you have a purpose and that you have a plan in mind for how you're going to use that information um, in future lessons. A second idea that we would like to focus on from the discussion board was this question of how to shift our focus and our students' focus away from the grade that they receive and towards their learning and how it's progressing. Andrew Otten brought up this challenge as well as a few ideas that he had to reduce the emphasis on students' grades. Some of his ideas focused on standard-based grading, which is what we're going to be talking more in Unit 3. Um, however, there are two ideas that I'd like for us to mention right now. And the first is, when you are giving students feedback on an assessment, think about where, whether your comments focus on the answer that students gave or on some aspect of the process that they went to solve the problem. And then the second question to think about is where you're placing the student's grade on their paper. Although it's very common for teachers to place a student's grade on the top right corner of the first page, this placement emphasizes their score and minimizes all of the other feedback that you've provided on the assessment. And as Christiana Hale mentioned, um, that she thought that it was a much different conversation to talk with students about how to be a better learner rather than how to get a higher grade. And things such as changing maybe where you're placing the score or just the types of feedback that you're giving them will certainly help to shift this focus um, with students about how to for them to be a better learner. Okay, so now let's turn our attention to unit three, which is on standards-based grading. So for this unit, you've got two readings and two discussion board posts, including one where you'll be putting your comments into a voice thread. So like in the last unit, we would like you to make your initial post in each of the discussions during the first week of the unit and then come back in the next week and reply to some of, your com some of the comments that have been made by other people in the class. Now one important thing for y'all to be aware of is that your assignment for this unit is a little different um, and it has three phases with three separate deadlines. So for the first phase, you're going to be solving a math problem and then submitting your work to us by this Wednesday. Then in the second phase, you're going to create a rubric um, that could be used to grade students' work for the task that you completed earlier in this week. Your rubric is due to us by Sunday, September 24th. And then at the beginning of the second week, um, we will send you some anonymous student work from other people in the class. Then for this last phase, you are going to use the rubric that you created and score the student work that we sent you, as well as provide them with some sort of feedback on their work. This last phase will be due by the end of the day on Sunday, October 1st. Now, there's more details about this assignment in Canvas, so I encourage you to look there. So this concludes our summary video about Unit 2, which was on formative and summative assessments. As always, if you have any questions about assignments or anything else for this class, feel free to contact Sam or I, and we look forward to hearing about your ideas about standards-based grading in the discussion board over the next two weeks.